Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is Ebby with Ebby Reviews and this is going to be a two for one um, thanks to Amazon Prime of the Dracula season three episode four and five. Um, apparently there were some issues with them uploading the video like I had to watch it on my phone because my regular fire stick uh, it showed the episode, but there was no button to press play on the episode. But when I went to the Prime video on my phone, not only was episode four available to watch, so was episode five. So, um, we are going to do episode four and five this evening. Um, I'm going to try to make this not very long, um, as I am covering two separate episodes, um, this evening, um, it's late. I have to go to work in the morning and I still have a full face. I just put on a full face of situations and circumstances just for y'all. I changed my eyelid from what I had earlier today. Shout out to Angelica Nyquist. She's another YouTuber and she dusted off her Afrique Juvis Place Afrique palette and did this exact look, only it looked way different on her because her skin is a different tone but sh I think she's cute so we gonna roll with it and yeah that's what we got so the first episode is called demon blood so um we go back to the safe house and it's the um end of the park well they're in the middle of the party um, uh, so, of course, uh, the Boule brothers are still dressed as, uh, in their best, uh, Faye Dunaway pink, uh, silk gowns. Um, uh, they, like, the kids, because they all look like grown adults, um, uh, are playing, like, games in the back room. They go into the back room, they feed them wine and desserts, and then next thing you know people are kissing and touching and all manners of things is happening and then everybody start throwing up blood and dies i don't know and then it goes to black so um and this continues on the next episode but we'll get we will get there so uh we're back in the boudoir um and everybody of course is taking bets on who went home louisiana purchase money is on hollow eve um Dahlia Black is all over the place these, in these two episodes. She's just, she don't know how to be, what to say, what to do with her life. I just, she's she's got a lot going on. But she says she hopes that the source of all evil has gone home, which she is referring to Madeline at this juncture. But yeah. Um. So when Madeline shows up, as the uh, first Hollow Eve shows up and then Madeline shows up and Dahlia is not particularly happy. She wanted her to go home. So, you know, there's that. So, Hollow Eve tends to pontificate a lot. Um, not, and not when a pro, like her, like she she goes on and on and you you're like but girl what does that got to do with what's happening here and it doesn't make any sense and girl what are you talking about and I don't understand and what huh be quiet that's honestly at one point I yelled at my phone shut up but you know <laughs> her her feminist fight the power fight 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 we got to fight the powers that be. And meanwhile, Pris uh, Priscilla Chambers in her confessional with a cigarette, like, girl, I just, I can't, just, ugh. okay. So, uh, this week's challenge is an acting challenge. It's Dungeon and Drag Queens. Um, so, they're going on location for the first time in this episode to a living renaissance village. So, uh, they assign them all characters that they have to play in this scene and that will determine how they do their costumes for this episode so 
uh, Priscilla Chambers is an elf bard. Eva Destruction is a reptile warrior. Um, Dahlia Black is an orc priestess. Maxi Glamour is a reptilian something. I can't even read my own handwriting. I just wrote this less than an hour ago. Don't judge me. Uh, Madden Hatter is a dark elf necromancer. <laughs> but I can read all that. Landed is an elf bard. Louisiana Purchase is an elf priestess. And Hollow Eve is a dark elf. There's a dark elf something something. Child, I don't know. Because their costumes really don't coincide with whatever they were supposed to be. So, they get back to the boudoir. Madeline has to explain to the rest of the queens what Dungeons and Dragons is. Y'all ain't watch Stranger Things? Okay, never mind. I'm not even gonna, not even gonna get that. So Israel shows up at the door with no shirt on and a scroll with a note with a, a clue about finding this key to life and death. And so everybody gets to search it around the room and guess who finds the key? The magic key, but Dahlia Black. This is gonna play a huge role at the end of this episode. Hold on, we're gonna get there. So um, everybody, they, they get their scripts and everybody's going over their parts and stuff. And Hollow Eve is giving very Master Thespian Shakespearean and Dothan this forth. Because she has, of course, she has a degree in theater. She has degrees, she said, plural, as in more than one. But yeah, um, so... While they're practicing their line and stuff and working on choreography for these fight scenes and things, um, Dahlia Black pull Dahl, not Dahlia, but Madeline pulls Dahlia to the side and they have a really good heart to sit down, heart to heart, and they explain a little about how they there was a get together or they went away somewhere and um Madeline had fell, fallen off the wagon and said some very um, ugly things to Dahlia and Dahlia's feelings was hurt at the time and they really, you know, sat down and, and talked it out and had a good heart to heart and they apologized and Dahlia was just like, I want, just want you to know that you're not alone. You don't have to go through it alone. Um, I'm here for you and whatever you need. So, don't feel like that you're by yourself. So, um, we get back to them practicing and Maxie and Eva are not meshing well, even though they are in the same um, scene together. Um, and so, uh, Eva is like, look, I, I don't have time for this. I just need him to get it together because I don't want to. He's like, I want to win, pretty much. So, um, Eva Destruction is telling her a bit of her backstory about how she didn't graduate from high school. She just made it to be a, a sophomore in high school and... At 17, her parents put her in a, um, they put her in a, a, like a teen wilderness boot camp to get her attitude right and her behavior modified. And she was like, you couldn't go anywhere by yourself. You couldn't go to the bathroom without permission. Like, it was like a really hard experience but she said she is going to use this to make sure that she can, that if she can survive that she can survive anything and drag really saved her life and it's a really touching story that that she tells about you know having to pull herself up by her bootstraps and things of that nature um and then they go around talking to all the queens of course about their creative process and what they're doing and how it's going to be done and all that good stuff and the amount of work and artistry in these looks is absolutely amazing. Stunning and gorgeous. 
and oh god of course i'm sorry i have ocd so now that i have a piece of nail that won't come off i i can't let it go until i find okay so we then go to the location because it's time for well it's not the floor show but the it's time for them to do their scenes at the Living Renaissance Village. So, the Boulay brothers come out and they have like this elaborate star bursty scorpion queen headdress and matching neck pieces. And the dresses were just plain black flowing dresses to give way to the pageantry and the majesty of both their headpieces and their jewelry and it was absolutely gorgeous um so the judges were screenwriter michael viarty and filmmaker dion darren stein now the start of this was very okay i'm gonna give you this reference and i hope you guys get it it's very lord of the rings meet magic the gathering is what this is. That's what that's the vibe that it was giving. Um, so I wrote Landon with two big ass exclamation points. Her drag for this part of the competition was out of this world. If I could figure out how to get screen grabs and do editing and insert things, I would insert a picture of her with this blue haired mohawk going all the way down and this prosthetic face and the elf ears and she looked she, she was so badass it was so good so let me tell you about this scene right so they're like oh they starts off they have they're on a mission to find this dragon's blood and whoever wins it is that's how you win the campaign so it starts with Hollow Eve, um, Eve Destruction, and Landon. So, Landon and Eva both have the, Landa and, Landon and Hollow Eve both have this very Britishy, um, Shakespearean, accent and Eva destruction sounds like Bubba from Hee Haw and when I tell you I was so damn tickled by this accent this misplaced accent everybody was like and thus the window breaks and you are my Juliet and it's not a rose by the name still so sweet and Eva destruction is over here like get her done I'm done I can't like I can't it was too, I was too tickled, too tickled by evil destruction. So, um, everybody did a, everybody did a really good job. Nobody was absolutely horrible in their, um, acting skills. Now, with their costumes, Dahlia Black, you know how it's always the person who absolutely needs the save on like maybe Project Runway when they have uh, immunity. And the the episode they have immunity is the one they really needed because whatever they made was absolute garbage. Her acting was fine, but her costume had, she looked more like a cross between Gollum and a White Walker and she was supposed to be like an elf and it just no baby no just no absolute no 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 not at all not 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 here not there not anywhere boo no so um the Brule brothers call her up because she, of course, has the key. And they say to her, okay, so this key holds the power of life and death. So you can either, one, save yourself from elimination. where you, If you, save, you use the key on yourself, you cannot be put up for extermination. Or, 
two, you can immediately send somebody down to extermination. Taking a bet on the fact that you won't be sent down alongside whoever you decide to choose. So, being the smart girl that she is, she decides to save herself. Because that's what the fuck I would have done. So, the tops were uh, Louisiana Purchase, Landed Cider, Madeline, Eva, and Hollow Eve. The bottoms were Maxi and Dahlia. However, since Dahlia used the key to save herself, the bottom of the saved people was Madeline. So Madeline had to go into the extermination. She was never, but we'll get there. So everyone got good marks on, you know, being able to take direction and um, being able to um, change up in their acting skills and all that good stuff. And so Eva Destruction won. Um, and I'm sorry, I wrote that down wrong. Okay, so I'm sorry. The accent, the Southern Boba accent was Priscilla Chambers, not Eva Destruction. I do apologize. I'm sorry. I get them too confused. But yeah, Eva Destruction won. Priscilla Chambers had that freaking accent and it took me down. Um, so this extermination was very Game of Thrones because they had to do like a walk of shame through town and have people scream epithets at them and throw rotten food. So Madeline completely melts down and freaks the freak. She freaks out. She completely loses her shit. Um, she was like, no, fuck that. I, she's like, I understand this. She was like, look, I told y'all I did not want to be humiliated. And, da -da 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 -da. and they're like, it's, it's a show. It's not. Girl, it's not real. It's not real. And then they, once they finally got that, it's not. It's a, it's a TV show, girl. It's a reality show. Whatever. They, it doesn't have to be true, necessarily true. But they're hollering that you don't take that on. Why would you? But sis, that's not how. No, ma'am. Return to Cinder. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No. Don't take that on. Don't take that on. So they finally talk her into participating in the walk of shame. So their walk of shame actually just took place along an aisle up to a stage. And so they get up on stage and they have to beg for, and, well, plead their case into why they should stay. And so... Madeline, in all of her infinite wisdom, decided to read the dog piss out of everybody. She was like, my name is Madeline Hatter and I deserve to stay because my costumes aren't made out of cardboard and because I don't talk behind people's back. And because, as she went down the row of every single one of those persons and gave a reason that the other person was crap and why she was better than them. <sighs> Got my whole life. Do you hear me? Got my whole damn life. And then it was Maxie's turn. And Maxie, instead of doing this same thing and reading everyone in the crowd, Maxie read the dog piss out of Madeline. She said... I'm Maxi Glamour and I deserve to stay there because even though my costume was made out of cardboard because I'm actually creative and use my artistry. <laughs> I said, oh, shit. Oh, no. Girl. So, you know, they turned it into it really wasn't anything shameful or hurtful. It was just a bunch of cute reads and they threw some like a food fight and then it was over. Of course, here comes a kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I am. Okay, let me know when you're done. Please, you call and cut spectrum out. What? The Wi-Fi in the entire house is down. Okay. Huh? Jimmy sleep there, so just let me know when you're done. Okay. Thank you. Good night. I don't want to be with him. you done. God bless you. Okay. 
children's cage. So, before I was so rudely interrupted by my kid, uh, Maxi Glamour, unfortunately, was eliminated. Um, she was running through the Renaissance village and they literally cut her, took a big broad sword and cut her head in half. Shwop. Head in half. Split down the middle. Cool effects, but you could tell it was fake. It's gross looking and looks sticky. And okay. All right, so we're going to move into episode five. I don't even have the name for episode five, so I will have to find it and put it in the description. I know this was an accident. Amazon Promise have been having issues uploading these episodes. I don't know what the issue is, but like I saw the episode was supposed to be out yesterday. I didn't go to look for it until today, but dramatizations continue and i got the next episode i don't know who else got the next episode but we are going to get right down to the nitty-gritty and then i'm gonna wash my face and go to bed so we are back at the safe house they are cleaning up the mess from the party uh the two men servants are like trying to pick up the trash and get the blood off the floor and the Boulay brothers are giving us very mom, Betty Davis mom, mommy dearest tease. Um, as I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the dirt. You call this clean. You got to get down there and scrub. They had they did the whole thing. So, um, and then they end up picking up the trash and going to throw the trash away. And then when you they pan down, there is a body hanging out of one of the trash cans. I don't know and I guess we'll get the next ep when the next episode appears we'll get that I wonder what they're gonna do are they gonna drop episode six next week or are we just gonna have to wait another week I don't know that's none of my business okay so we're back to the boudoir um everybody's taking bets and are correctly assuming that Maxie went home um so when they get that way badly gets there no one is surprised and everybody is all good. Dahlia kind of apologizes to Madeline because if she had not chosen to use the key, then she would not have been in the bottom again. And she was like, no, it's not your fault. Uh, you did the right thing. You should have saved yourself. Blah, 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 blah. So we then go to the Boulay brothers for their announcement about this week's challenge. And this week's and this week this episode's challenge is Trash Queen Couture. So they have to make their outfit completely out of trash. They have to do their makeup using permanent markers, and they have to do a live interview uh, before the floor show. So, so yeah, and I said permanent marker and construction paper for their makeup and that, and they can use the foundation, but anything above and beyond that, construction paper, magic markers. So, um, Priscilla Ch Chambers, um, uh, really identifies with this challenge. Um, she's been called a trash queen, and maybe not for being like trash queen couture but for being literal trash um she's only been sober for a couple of months um she was literally detoxing and everything when she got the call to be on dracula so she's like even every night she was her body was going through withdrawals and getting that call and getting on the show is what saved her life uh And while they're, everybody's trying to, you know, figure out what they're going to do and how they're going to create these looks using trash and going through their artistry and what it means to them and what statement they're trying to make, you know, Madeline talks to Priscilla because um, she can see she was really affected by, um, by everything. And so um, they're having a really... Con good conversation and 
they're still in the main room with everybody. It's not like Madeline took her to another room or something to have this conversation. And, you know, other people are having different conversations all around. And Priscilla is explaining to Madeline about, you know, her addiction. And, you know, she's just a couple months sober and how this means so much to her. And on the other side of the room, you know, um, Hollow Eve gets the giggles and she just starts giggling. You know how you get the church giggles and the more inappropriate the giggling is, the funnier something is so that is what she is going through right now and so priscilla because she's already emotional and in her feelings she takes that personally even though it had absolutely nothing to do with her at she wasn't how he wasn't doing it to be malicious it actually had absolutely nothing to do with her or anything that she was talking about in fact Pris hollow eve couldn't even hear what priscilla was saying it's just that at the moment that she was at her most vulnerable, they were over there and, you know, she got the giggles. And, you know, Priscilla internalized that to, like, they were taking over her moment of transparency and vulnerability. And it really upset her. So, you know, everybody handled that very maturely. Um... Priscilla was very, she was very hurt, even though she knew that it was, it wasn't the most rational feeling to be having at the time. She understood the context of what was happening. She knew that Hollow Eve was not laughing at her, that it had nothing to do with her. Nobody was laughing at her or her struggles or what she was going through. She was just internalizing it because she was open and vulnerable at the time and she was taking on that's how the mind does it'll take on things that's 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 not the case and turn your perception into your perception is what your reality is um however you know madeline and eva go into the bathroom with um priscilla and they talk to her and they talk her down and everything and the verbiage that they're using make it almost seem like um hollow was just full of shit if, for lack of a better terms and that's the part where because hollow had gotten up to go talk to um priscilla to apologize and just be like hey it had absolutely nothing to do with you i didn't make mean to make you feel any type of way but the way what was being said at the time to um encourage and um to sympathize with Priscilla um was hurtful to hollow because it made it seem like she was doing it on purpose and so she walked away she didn't even go in the bathroom she just came back out and she was like I can't be in that space right now because right now she's being used as the scapegoat and she's like it's hurtful to me but I don't want to make it blow it up and make it bigger than what it is because I I can she sees and recognizes what is actually happening and everybody handles it in such a mature way um which I liked a whole lot because they come back the next day they leave for the day and they come back the next day and Priscilla says I understand that you weren't this wasn't done on purpose or you weren't trying to steal my moment or anything of that nature and I just wanted to apologize because I was just trying to get out my moment of transparency and vulnerability and all that good stuff and I just felt slighted at that time by the laughter even though I know the laughter actually had absolutely nothing to do with me and what I was saying um and so hollow eve also apologized um and everything was good so everybody's getting ready and doing their makeup i want to say that this episode they made a better use of the uh, that instead of that alarm going off and everybody pretend faking to be you know oh my god i'm not even half dressed my makeup is half done because they start playing, blaring the announcement for, oh, the floor show is about to start. The floor show is about to start. 
But at this point, you can hear like the sirens halfway, but then there's music playing over it. So it makes it more like it's an announcement for us that, you know, even though they're ha in f different various stages of being done with their drag for this competition, for this particular floor show, you know, the floor show is getting ready to start. They're, that's their tra they're transitioning from the boudoir where they're getting ready to being completely done and on the floor show. So, um, the Boule brothers show up for, um, the floor show. I have Pin Up Demon Barbie slash the mama from Hairspray. Because they have, like, the little caplet, pink caplet in a body con dress with little pink body, baby pink body, body con dress with little roaches on. Applique on the dress, like, the mama from, um hairspray like it was it was everything they looked really good so the judges are season two winner butch bitch pudding who if i could just stop for a minute and say all hail the queen because that bitch was done she as my uncle james caldwell would say she was clean she was clean 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 you hear me clean head to toe clean crown Perched, hair out, face beat. Bitch was done. Done to death. I said, oh, bitch, come on. Come on, crown and scepter, black gown, black crown. Come on. Big white. Oh, my gosh. She looks so good. Okay. I'm going to get off her dick. Okay. The uh, other judge was uh, Felissa Rose. Um, and she played Angela in some show, some movie, chat, some horror movie. So the the live interviews <laughs> were done with Disasterina. She did an absolutely wonderful job. The some of the interviews were really good. Some felt really flat. Um, London was a little flat. Uh, Landis was a little flat. I said London. Um. Hollow Eve. Okay, so Hollow Eve's costume was made out of Maxi Pad tampon. And she said she was making this big statement about how women are made to feel ashamed about, I guess, being on their period and having to, um, I don't, I understand that she's talking about women are made to be trash and we're not trash and she's living in her truth and all that lovely stuff and um, I literally wanted to scream. Shut up. Would you just shut up? Okay, girl, we get it. Everything. It, oh, my God. Because this is going to come back around when we get to right before the elimination challenge, which was hideous this this uh, episode. So, did I talk about extermination? I did. I did. Okay. So, uh... Priscilla Chambers won the challenge. She was serving very trash queen realness. Um, trailer trash. She was on point. She was absolutely on point and she won. And she had a good banter with Disasterina um, in their live interview. Like, I literally laughed out loud because that Bubba accent takes me down every single Takes me down every single time. Disaster Rita said, well, let's go deep. Because I guess she'd be giving surface answers. And she was like, well, how deep you want to go? And she was like, how, how deep can you go? And she deep throats the microphone. Done. Pack me up. Put me in the refrigerator for lunch tomorrow because I am done. Left over. Done. Finito. Jesus. Um, Hollow Eve got some criticism and she apparently can't take criticism because instead of just saying okay uh, and, and taking in what is told to her she took it as an insult to her artistry which was not what was being said at the beginning of every judgment the Boule brother said we are not judging your drag because drag is subjective and drag is art what we are going to do is judge the drag that you present as it pertains to 
the um, challenge this week. And they gave her some criticism. They just said, oh, we just wish the bottom of it was a little f uh, fuller. Everybody, you know, people had big gowns and things of that nature. And she had a little bodice and a little skirt. And, she and they said, oh, it just seems like the bottom was a little unfinished. They loved the textiles. They loved the message that she was giving. But she didn't hear any of that. She felt just like it was attack on the statement that she was trying to make in her artistry as a woman in this male-dominated space. And she gave this long drawn out speech that nobody asked for and I don't remember half of what she said but girl I guess child whatever um so Landon and Priscilla were in the top and of course uh Priscilla won and so the only person who did they didn't dismiss anybody from the stage they told uh Maddie she was safe uh so, it was Hollow Eve and Eve of Destruction who were actually up for extermination. But everybody but Priscilla had to um, compete in the extermination challenge. Which was called Roach Tube. Let me tell you about this nasty shit. They said, we're going to we're gonna put your mouth on the end of a tube. And the other person puts their mouth on the end of that tube. And we're going to drop a roach in the middle. And you blow. And whoever gets the roach to touch the other person's mouth wins. Okay, I'm out. I'm not going to do that. Are you drunk? Are you drunk? I'm not doing that. Oh, Jesus, that took me down. I could not. I just absolutely could i could not i would not no and because i watch it so you don't have to i literally was like this oh jeez that's how i was watching that whole extermination oh my god so we then go to later on that evening um and I'm so rude. My note said, listen, can they just kill Hollow Eve already? Jesus. Okay, so the extermination challenge is over. And so we don't know who left, won or lost, uh, who's going to be eliminated yet. So they go in the back and Hollow Eve's. So Eva is like, you know, I've worked hard for this. I am Eva Destruction. I am strong. I can do this. Blase Bloom. And then Hollow Eve, of course. Can't be left out. Can't be unheard. Goes into this long dissertation about she is a woman. Hear her war and her maxi pads and tampons and blah, 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 blah. Oh, God. Can they just kill her now? And unfortunately, they did a couple minutes later because Hollow Eve was eliminated. They put a plastic bag over her face and she was found in the trash with a bag over her head. Just from suffocating. They strangled her to death. And that was the end of episode five. So, I can't wait for the next episode. I don't know when that's going to come out. Um, but we will see. That is all that I have for you guys this evening. I absolutely need to wash my face and go to bed. Because I got work in the morning. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. I am going to get my love and listings and the come up. I'm in Millennial of Dallas probably tomorrow. I'll start to work on those reviews. Um, but that is all I have for this evening. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Please click the bell so you get notification every time I drop a video. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.